Hello guys, welcome to TMX Adventures, Lisa here. Hey, today we're gonna to have a really important chat about looking after your blades in your Thermomix, regardless of what model you've got. Part of that though, I wanna make yogurt because I'm gonna show you a bit of an important point through that. So today I'm gonna to use this amazing recipe from Cookie Do. I am changing a few parts of it, which doesn't probably surprise you. Uh, so come with me today and I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do. By the way, if you're watching on Facebook, say hi. Uh, and those of you on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. Uh, I'd love to get to 4,000 subscribers by Christmas if possible. So thank you to those of you who do watch on over there. Um, so let's get on to this recipe. It's called yogurt with red berry coolie. Now, I'm skipping some of it. I have jam in the fridge and I have jam coming in daily. I have this massive, hello Anne, a massive container worth of berries that are coming in every day. So we're making constant supplies of jam. Now I could make a berry coolie with this. I've got some already. So I'm not gonna worry about it, okay? So I'm going to just keep moving on with this recipe and get to the yoga part, because this is a part I know, actually I get most inquiries about when it comes to thermomixing. Okay, so I'm gonna scroll through where they would normally make a berry coolie with berries and sugar. Um, and then they are gonna pick up, we're gonna pick up here. So it says place a small bowl in the mixing bowl lid and add 50 grams of natural yogurt to it. Now I've just guesstimated, I've taken a couple of big chunks out of my previous batch and I've put it in a bowl, okay? And I've guesstimated, 55 grams is gonna be about two tablespoons. Doesn't matter if you're a little bit over, uh, it does matter if you're probably under, a fair bit under, okay? Because you just don't have enough cultures to cultivate the whole one litre. says set it aside. Now it says put 1,000 grams, which is one litre of full cream milk. Now I was hoping to use my long life today, okay? I, but I opened the drawer and the drawer was empty. I went shopping last night though and I actually bought an, a milk that was due to expire today, okay? Expiry 8th of November. And so it's a, it's not a cheap brand. It's a nice quality. I think it might've been real life or it was one of those ones, a Jersey one. I can't remember, but it's a full, it's a full cream, cream on top style milk. Um, and I know normally you can get more days out of it anyway. I was just going to make the kids custard and ice cream and stuff with it, but I'm today going to use this. So about an hour and a half ago, I put this milk on and I heat treated it. Now heat treating is actually what they do to make the long life milk. And that's the next step in this recipe. It says without the measuring cup, put it on for 10 minutes at 80 degrees B3. Now heat treating kills off the cultures. The cultures is what will sour your milk. It is what makes it long life, okay, in a carton. It is what you then do so that you have the yogurt cultures that are able to multiply. Otherwise the two cultures clash and nothing happens. Okay, you don't get fermented yogurt. So I have done that step already because I figured you did not want to sit for an hour and a half ish it says 45 minutes it takes longer than that in my opinion till it cools down okay now you'll see it says just to get to 45 normally i say to you do not put a culture into the bowl over 40 because it kills it and that's the same with when you're cooking yogurt if you ever do the bowl method you want to cook it not at 70 which is what fermenting is actually preset at you want to cook it at 40 degrees or 37, okay? I'd say 40 in winter when we've got quite a cold external environment, 37 in summer. All right, so that's bowl method. We're not doing bowl method today. We don't have to worry, but that is one of the biggest queries I get from you is it is actually ran yogurt. The, the amount of times I get a query that says, I did the bowl method, but it's, it's runny. And I say, did you change it down? Like, did you follow a guided recipe or you do it manually? Oh no, I did it manually. Well, manually has it preset to 70. I don't know why, it just does. All right, so you gotta change it down to 40. So 45 today though, because we're about to add more content to the bowl, which will bring the heat out of the bowl further. Okay, so that's why 45 is okay. Add a little of the cooled milk to the yogurt, stir to combine. I don't bother. Follow the steps if you'd like, okay? Add the yogurt mixture to the Thermomix now. Okay, so yogurt mixture. As I said, I didn't weigh it, but you'll get to see how much it is now. There we go, there's 55, and I'm just gonna put the rest in because I don't like wasting it. Um, and I always scoop some out of my original batch, so I will just make sure there's some put aside for the next batch, okay? Hello, Kelly, lovely to see you on. All right, milk powder. This is a thickener. If you don't wanna do milk powder, you can do cream, but it does produce a different result. You get a creamier yogurt with cream, whereas you get a thicker yogurt with 
milk powder. Okay, makes sense. So you can do it with either and really it's pretty much a straight swap. So 50 grams of milk powder, full cream milk powder. Somebody's going to ask me for sure, can you do this with lactose free? I've never tried it. But I reckon if they make a lactose-free milk powder, you might be able to. Give it a go. Hello, Amy. If your yogurt doesn't work, my, my suggestion is you turn it into icy poles. You know, like ice blocks, with the, or freeze it into ice cubes and then use it in yogurt later, um, into the yogurt smoothie later. You know, like don't let it go to waste. Um, next. Okay, so on with the lid. I have a lid. I had to actually wait for a lid. All our lids are in the dishwasher and we were boiling eggs in the other thermi before I got online here. Five seconds, you can see it's already dropped to 40 degrees. Speed four. This is just pulling all this mix together. That's all this is doing, okay? It's just combining it well together. If you didn't have yogurt but you got the culture, the inner health plus insides, um, you can sprinkle that in instead, but you do want that heat of the bowl to get down to 40 before you do that. You don't want to kill those little delicate cultures. Okay, so now it's telling me what to do in the jars. So I don't have all my jars. I don't know why. I've only got somehow moving ages ago, like a long time ago now, I, I've come out with less. These are the awesome mix shop jars. Fantastic, love them. Have used them for various different things. Maybe I've gifted them away. Maybe that's what happened, I don't know. I'm gonna use those today, but I've also got a big jar as leftovers. All right, so we'll see how we go with that. I'm just gonna put this on top of here so that you can see what's going on. So first things first, the coolie, which mine's actually, when I say coolie, mine's more like a jam, but you could put some curd. You could do like lemon curd, passion fruit curd, mango curd. Uh, or coolies, which are purely fruit and sugar kicked off, cook, cooked off. Okay, if you don't want this, the berry one that's listed there, go on a cookie do, search coolie, and you will actually find like a coolie recipe to follow. It's been in our basic cookbook for years, since as long as I can remember, so it's at least been 10 years. So I'm just putting a dribble in the bottom of each one. Now, something to note, it kind of messes up the science if you mix this through. Don't mix it through. Okay, the cultures really struggle uh, if you do that. I'm just opening this little jar. It's got a little dot on the bottom. Now, something else to note, clean jars, clean Thermomix. If you're doing it in the bowl method, clean Thermomix. If you've ever ended up with a stringy, that means a stringy yogurt, it means that it wasn't cultured evenly. It means your bowl likely had a bit of oil residue or something in there still. Okay, clean bowl's important. So I'm just, grab this little spoon out. Okay, so just a little bit in the bottom of each. Okay, tells us to pour it gently over. So, I wonder if I can do this. I wonder if this will sit here for me. I might do it if I do that. Or not. I will hold it at the same time. Okay, just so you guys can see pretty much. So we're just purely, I don't know that you guys can see. Oh, you can see from the top. Okay, sorry about that. In this goes. Now I have done a terrible job of try of not allowing it to break up the bottom. So this will be a slightly soggy style yogurt, most likely. Wouldn't be surprised if in tomorrow when I take it out, it's kind of runny. Just because those cultures are gonna have more work to do because of that spread out mix. Now, if you have cinches and things like that, now some of you won't know what cinches are, but those of you that do. I've also done this batch of cinches a very, very, very long time ago when my kids were young, and it's certainly something you can do. Okay, so I've put that all in. We now need to put the lids on. So lids go on. Now, I'm gonna just take this off and aside. You won't need to do it one-handed, you'll be okay. You won't be as unco as me. So the lids need to go on for this so that you don't get any moisture in there. Now, cinchies, by the way, I know some of you are going, what's a cinchie? Do I need to Google it? They're the little pockets that you do with baby's food. Um, and you can do it with yogurt so that you don't have to buy those pockets. It's going to save you so much money um, making it instead of buying it. Like those things, those little packets of yogurt can be, like even Mark to Clear, I saw some today. They were still 99 cents on Markdown. <laughs> like, it's not cheap. I can make this when I use long life stuff. I don't know how much I paid for the discounted stuff of proper like out of the fridge milk but if i'm using long life it's a dollar 70 for a liter 
So you can make it for $1.70 plus some um, milk powder and your previous batch. Like it's so cheap. Um, I need another bowl. Hold tight, only because I haven't used all my mix out of that one. I'm going to need to find some more jars. But I'm not going to do that online, but this is where I want to talk about blades. I messed up in there too. I'm making a mess today. So let's, let me grab another bowl and we're going to talk about blades. So, need to clean out the bowl. I told you we were boiling eggs, yeah? <laughs> Using egg boiler mode. I'll just put these aside. Um, Luckily, they're boiled eggs. If you don't use egg boiler mode, you are missing out. We have been using it so much lately. Um, it's If you don't know where it is, swipe sideways. Look for the little egg symbol. It's there. We use medium, uh, and sometimes we're doing eight, ten eggs. Although in saying that, the clause on that is we don't do jumbo eggs. Our eggs are probably, probably not even large eggs because they're coming from our chickens. So the clause on extra eggs is that we're using our own. Back to our recipe. Okay, so rinse the mixing bowl. 250 grams of water. Now we're coming up to what I need to talk to you about. And this query came from somebody actually saying, hey, my blades are rusting. Okay, now in my 11 years with Thermomix, I don't think I've ever had someone say their blades are rusting. But I know why they might. So I want you to not have this same challenge. Okay, see this next step, lemon juice. It is important. Now, some just really simple basic science. I'm no smarty pants when it comes to science, but rust happens when two metals come together. Okay, regardless. So that's why roofing screws have a, a rubber thing on them, right? Like a collar so that the two metals don't touch each other because if they touch, they're going to rust. So in our blades, our blades are made of a metal, right? And there's portions there that are together that don't have rubber between them because we don't want rubber in our food or in our hot stuff. So they actually don't generally rust, but there's ways that we could make them rust. And one of which is soaking them. Okay, so my first tip today is do not ever soak your blades to clean them because it is the prime environment for rust to thrive. Okay, it's a natural occurring thing. You can, when I say you can't prevent it, but there's things you can do that stop that process. Okay, so number one, if you're ever going to soak your blades for some reason, and I would really suggest you don't, get the little straw scrubbers from the mix shop and, and scrub them out instead. But if you're going to, it needs to have something acid in it. It needs to have lemon, vinegar, or citric acid, something that neutral that, that stops, neutralizes are probably the wrong word, but it stops the rust happening. So that's why this is here. We Anything over about four hours, it's a threat of damaging your blades, okay? Because those parts that are touching each other that are metal to metal, that's where you're going to see it, okay? Now, if that happens, it also tarnishes, by the way. That's the other thing it does. It tarnishes. You'll find, for the same reason, you're kind of holding it at that perfect temperature, like, like making yogurt cultures grow. It's that same perfect temperature that makes that happen you know makes the cultures happen makes rust happen it's a perfect you know equation so that's why okay so don't kill your blades by soaking them not only is it bad for the steel but it's bad for the bearings inside your your blades and i have a set of blades here i was going to show you what did i do with them they're in my hand before here we go you've taught i've talked to you before about how to check your blades if you need that video link let me know and i'll send that through to you okay because your blades are made up of kind of two, three but two compartments, okay? And this is the part that's all steel on steel, right? From like the, the little top bit to the blade bit to the blade bit to the bit that's holding it underneath. That's all like steel on steel. That's that's what's at risk, so to speak. Not to mention that these will tarnish. If you That's why if you ever just put water in there for the eight hours, you're at risk of tarnishing them. But it's made up of those components. In this bit here, in this center cog, you've actually got all your bearings. That's what allows it to move. All right? So you don't want them submerging water either. So um, if 
if by some chance you had some sort of rust forming around these little connections here, if I was going to soak it, I'd put this little bit here into something that didn't cover this section. This section here, that middle section with the, what I, what I call the hat, okay, to this bit, does not want to swim, okay? Does not want to go in the water. If you can go to dishwasher, that's fine. But don't soak it, okay? Don't soak it. So, yeah, if these are the parts that, you know, if you were ever to get any rust because you've skipped this step um, or you've let it soak, that's the part that I would say, you know what, that's actually what you want to get into some vinegar, into some citric acid, because rust also comes off. So that, you know, the good news is that rust won't stay. Um, you just got to give it the right environment to get rid of. So if you did have a little rust line on there, um, you know, get some, literally put that in some vinegar and then get your scrubbies. If you haven't checked out a scrubby from Meat Shops, check it out. Um, and gently remove it, okay? Easy done. But that's something I've never come across before, but now you know, okay? And when you know, we can do things differently, yeah? So um, that is your blades. That's how you protect them. There is another video I've got on how to actually protect those bearings. So let me know if you want that video. But to protect them, that's what we see. We see lemon juice, we see uh, vinegar used um, or something, or citric acid, yeah? So place the Varoma dish with the jars. Where's my, there's my lid. Into position. This goes in here. This goes in here and you can see this has got, now by the way, the lids these days are black. I just thought I'd grab a clear one so you could kind of see what happens. Cause I know some of you are very, very visual. I'm a visual learner. Uh, 10 hours, see how it's set at 70 degrees. Now this is okay because the, what is going to be 70 degrees is our 250 mils of water and our acid. That's going to be 70. That humidity created at that 70 is going to make it up to our jars and that's going to hold those jars for 10 hours at that beautiful fermenting temperature of 37 to 40, which is what we need for the cultures to thrive. They eat out the, the sugar, they eat out the stuff out of the milk and they culture to make, make what we know as yogurt. Yeah. So all we do is we flick this dial, by the way, it's worth noting, you can see that like at the moment, even just today's temperature, it's 37 degrees. Although I think my bowl might have, it had boiling eggs in it. So it might have a bit of residue temperature, but it's hot today. It's really hot. So we just activate it and off it goes. Okay. Now this is Varoma method yogurt. Okay. Different to bowl set where you have two liters or a liter of milky yogurt in this space here. If that was the case, you would not have a roller in place. You would have a measuring cup in place and you would not do it at 70. Okay. I'm just reiterating that it would be at 37 degrees. Now that's actually what happens if you use fermentation mode. So I don't know if it'll let me go into it while they're cooking now, but now it won't let me do it. But fermenting mode, if you were to manually make this in fermenting mode, you need to bring it down because it starts on 70, just like now, and you need to bring it down. Okay, so, and all these cultures and stuff, 37 to 40 is all they can handle. Anything over, same with even your yeast in your bread. Over 40 degrees, you are cooking it and it dies. Okay, so just something to put in your memory bank on how things work. All right, so I hope you've got some tips today. I hope you give this recipe a go. I haven't done it in a long time and it is phenomenal. Okay, the coolie, the yogurt, like there is no reason to go buy the fancy stuff in the supermarket. You've got the tools with your Thermomix. Now, hang on, TM31 and TM5 people, just before we go, you don't have a long ferment on your Thermomix. You may have automatic yogurt. Oh, look at the flies. <laughs> They're terrible. Luckily, everything's got lids on. Um, you don't have an automatic ferment on yours. The TM5, you do, but it's a bit different, yeah? Um, I would suggest you get yours into a cooler bag. You know the good old Woolworths, Coles, cooler bags, IGA, whatever it is. You put yours in a thermo server and you put the lid on and you put it in a cooler bag and you put it somewhere to stay that neutrally warm for that 8 to 10 hours. That is what I would do if I had and when I had a TM31 and TM5. Okay, you don't have fermenting right one more note for Team 6 owners, you'll hear it stirring at the moment. Very shortly it will stop. 
and at that point of stopping, it won't go again. It will just stay stationary. Now, um, if your power went out or something random like that, I do get this time of year, it's storm season, I get those questions. Um, don't re-kick it off. If it's been fermenting for six hours, five hours, don't re-kick it off. Leave it off so that because you don't want it to re-stir. You do not want it to start that stir again. It'll just wreck the cultures. I would chuck some towels over it. It's off, power's off. Insulate it here and now without disturbing it. Okay, because that's all it needs. It actually doesn't, it just needs to hold firm on what it's currently got. It's got all it needs in there to ferment. We just need to not allow the coolness of our nights to, to adjust that temperature. Doesn't happen very often, but now you know. Okay, just in case, you never know. All right, guys, that's it for me today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Look after your blades. They're the wear and tear part of your thermomix, a bit like tires on a car. Okay, they're the bit that is going to be designed over time to have to be replaced. But there's things we can do to kind of make them last longer. And I hope today you've taken away some hints and tips for that. Take care. I look forward to seeing you in the next video soon. And keep an eye out. This will be tomorrow before you get to see photos because it needs to ferment for 10 hours. But we'll see you then. Bye for now.